Welcome to our tutorial on if-else statements. In this tutorial, we'll do some math with if, if-else, and else statements. Basically, the text box 1 will accept one integer. The second text box will accept the operator. My third text box will accept the second integer. The result will be displayed in this label. Let's see how it all works together. The variable int in 1 will accept its value from the first text box. The second variable, which is defined as a string, will accept its value from the text box operator. The last variable will accept input from text box 2. Next is our if statement, which reads like this. If string operator is equal to a minus sign, then the caption property of label 1 will store the value derived from the total of integer 1 minus integer 2. Now if the operator is not equal to a minus sign, we're going to go to another branch of the if operator, else if. This statement will compare the value stored in string operator to a plus symbol. If this argument turns out to be true, then label 1 will display the sum of int in 1 and int in 2. Another option, if we enter something totally different in the operator box, a symbol other than the plus or minus symbols, we're going to go to another branch of the if operator, the else operator. The caption property of label 1 will store a string. Please enter plus or minus. Lastly, we've got the end if statement, which closes the if statement. You may notice that the code lines go in steps. Let's highlight everything. We're going to press the tab key to move everything to the right side. The reason for this, it makes it easier to understand the written code and, of course, easier to review for bugs. Let's run our program. We'll do something simple, 1 plus 1 and compute. Equals 2. 1 minus 1, we change our operator, equals 0. Now let's enter the multiplication symbol, the asterisk, and press compute. We get the message, please enter plus or minus. Let's return to our code. We can improve the user experience even more by utilizing an input box function here. Now if I enter something in the operator text box, a value other than plus or minus, the program will display an input box and the value we entered will be stored in the string operator. Here we've got another if statement. You see this if statement starts and ends at the same distance from the left side of the code window. The same is true here. This lets you easily identify where the if statement starts and ends. And here again, we've got the same routine. First, we compare the value stored in the string operator to the minus symbol. If this argument is true, the routine performs the calculation, subtracting int in 2 from int in 1. Next is the else if statement. Actually, let's use an else statement. The value stored in the string operator is equal to a plus symbol. Then label 1. Oops, I need to remove this line. Basically, if the string operator is not equal to 1, label 1 will display the sum of integer int 1 and integer int 2. The text parameters of the text box txt operator will store the string plus. Now let's see how it works. 1 plus 1 equals 2. Let's multiply now. 
Here's my input box asking for a plus or minus. The default value is a plus symbol. Let's click OK. Here are our results, with the plus symbol appearing in the second text box. The reason, by the way, why the input box appeared this high is because I need to change the value of the X and Y positions. Let's change it to, say, 2500 by 2500, and we're going to test it again. One by two. Compute. I still need to increase the X and Y values even more. By the way, if we don't have value here at all, By the way, if we don't enter any X and Y positions at all, the input box will be positioned about one-third of the way from the left and top corner. And let's remove a comma here. And we'll run our program again. Now everything looks fine. And this concludes our tutorial on the if, else if, and else statements.